Today, I want to highlight some of the awesome work that both KDE and the Fedora teams have been doing, including how they're crossing paths and improving Linux for all. Now, I discussed this recently. A proposed change to Fedora, one of the most popular Linux distributions, was to offer a new desktop experience. Well, sort of. With the launch of 42, there are plans on making a new available default workstation offering. What does that mean? Well, that means we're going to get two different types of Fedora versions for the workstation. Right now, it is GNOME-based. The GNOME desktop, as they say here, is a beautiful, high-quality desktop built on the latest open-source technology, trusted, powerful, and easy. So with the latest proposal, instead of just having the offering of GNOME currently, there will be a new offering in the workstation edition. Basically, we're going to have the option of selecting two editions, but it turns out for other reasons than what GNOME currently serves. Why Fedora Workstation? Well, they say it's reliable, free and private, beautiful, trusted, makes the most of your device and has leading technologies built in. It's for everyone, including having fantastic apps, integrated, a global community of translators with many languages, and other great features just for the everyday desktop user, including developers. Fedora has definitely made its name in Linux for being on the cutting edge of features, which developers definitely appreciate having access to the latest and greatest features. It helps them stay among the emerging trends and technologies. It has excellent documentation and support. It strictly focuses and is committed to FOSS or free and open source software. And many people appreciate this transparency. And even Linus himself uses this as their default Linux distribution to continue developing the Linux kernel on. Now, some exciting changes are occurring with Fedora. Fedora Plasma has been a spin, but is getting promoted. The GNOME desktop has been the default environment for the Workstation Edition for about a decade now. And this is why this is a massive proposed change for Fedora Linux, signaling what Fedora wants to accomplish for the future. Basically, this here was posted back in November, a proposed change to Fedora Linux. And the summary is that they wanted to switch the default desktop experience for Workstation to KDE Plasma. The GNOME desktop is moved to a separate spin or edition, retaining release blocking status. Now, while this may sound like they want to switch KDE to GNOME, that's not the case here. Basically, it's just applying two different workstation editions, so you can choose which one you want, which did become big news as the request to upgrade Fedora KDE desktop spin to an addition status under the personal systems work group was closed and approved. Don't mind the red. Two months ago, the approval was made as discussed at Flock, which is Flock to Fedora, the Fedora Project's annual contributor focused conference that they have. They discussed this and with the Fedora KD SIG special interest group. And the special interest group is just a collective of contributors who collaborate on a specific area of interest, aka the KD desktop on Fedora. And this all formed a new Fedora personal systems working group that will oversee the special interest group and are requesting that Fedora KDE Plasma Desktop Spin be upgraded to addition status for Fedora Linux 42. That's right, it has approval to be a workstation edition as soon as version 42 of Fedora. So when can we expect this? Well, the current timeline looks like we can expect an end of April release, which is fantastic. Now this is really cool because it has significant impact and benefits for creators and the Linux community. You might be asking why creators? And what do you mean by creators? I mean content creators. For those of you who are familiar with Fedora's design suite, it's a ready to go desktop environment brimming with free and open source multimedia production and publishing tools. It has applications already built onto it as soon as you install it, including GIMP, Inkscape, Blender, Darktable, Krita, Scribus, SparkleShare, PitTV, and the GNOME Color Manager. You could download and install this Fedora design suite, even for 41, mainly for, for Intel and AMD x86-64 systems, and it would get you many tools that you would need in order to have the proper tools for content creation. So coming in with the approval, another exciting thing has shed light on why they want this KDE desktop variant made. The focus will be on a specific market. They're planning on catering KDE Plasma Desktop Edition to multimedia enthusiasts. People who use AV and gaming particularly VRR on Wayland or DRM leasing content creators aligning with KDE and Qt software in the space such as Caden Live, Krita, and OBS Studio, accessibility and personalization as you use KDE Plasma features to customize your own desktop experience. Even though 
the details here are being created still. This is all exciting news. Well, especially for yours truly, but a lot of people will be interested in this as we're going to get robust creative tools for everyone to use and improved Wayland support inside Fedora, which is exciting as well. This is great for the Linux community as I think a lot of us have really seen how KD Plasma has been becoming more and more mature and stable over the past few years as it's really competing against GNOME. And I myself have started using it on Arch Linux. This is an interesting move by Fedora to attract a broader audience. In my opinion, multimedia enthusiasts and creators are now a substantial part of the tech community. And this choice of making a KDE Plasma Desktop Edition for Fedora that focuses on creators and the gaming community is a great choice. You can definitely see how Fedora is advancing and winning across the board with many improvements and a continued commitment to the broad Linux community as they're starting to highlight what things will look like with the release of KD Plasma, Plasma 6, and the things that they want to focus on. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to this specific article so you can check out exactly what they're planning on doing. With this strong support for cutting edge tools and including content creators and the Linux community alike, I want to talk about the wins of KDE Plasma as well. But before we do, take a moment to subscribe below. As YouTube can get finicky, you wouldn't want to miss another video like this. Also, smash that like button so more people can get this type of content. Now I want to talk about KDE, as it seems to be slowly becoming more and more people's go-to. And in my opinion, ever since the KDE mega release of version 6, they've really kicked it into gear. As they really improved their user experience here with Plasma 6, the stability, the user friendliness, the responsiveness have all been amazing. And I can definitely talk about that as I'm using Arch Linux and I've had no issues. The sleeping works great and the Wayland support has been cutting edge. Features like variable refresh rate have come, DRM leasing make it ideal for gaming and multimedia tasks. And it's only gonna get better with this new release of KDE Plasma on Fedora. The customization on KDE's desktop environment feels like it's hard to beat. There's so many features that you can change up and make your own, including workflows and just tweaking the desktop environment. It's got beautiful aesthetics and KDE has really been driving desktops forward since version six and now they're on 6.3. They've also been focused on Plasma Mobile. The mobile version of Plasma has undergone several enhancements since the last version of KD Plasma. And as we're becoming a more and more mobile world, it makes sense that they're focusing on some of this desktop development as well. Regardless, it just has a ton of features for everyday users already built in. Is it as polished as GNOME? Some will argue no. But I will say that the applications available and the support for making the desktop your own is better than GNOME. Which leads me into talking about why KDE just does a fantastic job and has been doing this for a while now of releasing constant updates, including fixing bugs all the time. But with notable new features always getting released, we're constantly updated by the KDE team on things that they're working on. It just seems like they really try and get a lot done with every subversion or minor version and have notable bug fixes. I mean, it's a ton of things that they go through and fix and you could claim, well, that's because they don't have a polished desktop experience. And that's just not the case. They really do. They just focus on more technical and performance improvements. And those all come from the community. As you can help by contributing bug reports and documentation all to KDE as they highlight in a lot of their posts. It's one of the reasons KDE tends to go to the top of the list when it comes to desktop environments available on Linux. There's a massive focus on listening to the community which of course, using that feedback makes for an overall better experience on the desktop environment. I mean, just in a week of time, we get many blog posts about the things that the KDE team is working on, including improvements and new features on Sunday, the 12th of January, we get a slew of updates. And this is almost on a weekly basis at this point. Many applications getting updated, even though it's minor stuff, it's just all quality of life improvements, which I love to see. I don't see this from the GNOME team or other desktops. They just don't feel like they're interacting with the community as much as Plasma does. They keep us informed and up to date as not only do they feature everything that they're currently working on, but things that they've already fixed and when they're coming out. It's fantastic to go through these blogs on a weekly basis just to see all the notable bug fixes that they're 
releasing to the public soon. It's mind-blowing. And here's another one on Sunday the 19th of January with a bunch more updates released. Every week I see this wonderful team working on more and more updates. Caden Live is also one of the best video editors out there, if not the best when it comes to Linux at least and free and open source. It's hard to compete against it and the team is completely focused on developing a wonderful experience for all of us. Some of the major tools for content creators have been created by the KD team. And I'm definitely a fan of some of their tools as I've used them in the past, even though that Fedora is going to compete against other editions that already exist that do kind of a similar thing that they're planning on this KD Plasma Workstation edition to do, such as focusing on the content creation studio side of things. Well, there's Ubuntu Studio, there's also AV Linux that focuses on multimedia and content creation. But I believe Fedora is just gonna do this better. Only time will tell, but I'd love to hear from you and what you think about KDE as well as Fedora. As Fedora is built by you, both teams love to focus on the community and that's what it feels like really sets them apart. As this fusion of Fedora and KDE Plasma will not only enhance the user experience, but also positions Fedora to being a leading choice for enthusiasts and professionals. Whether you're a content creator or an average everyday user of a desktop, Fedora is gonna have you covered with the latest and greatest workstation edition being released with Fedora 42. Can't wait to see how Fedora KD Plasma evolves and how both projects evolve on their own because I know they're setting the benchmark for distributions and desktop environments. So it's wonderful to see this fusion of the two. Let me know if you're excited for this new Fedora 42 KD Plasma workstation. I'd love to hear from you and your experience with Fedora and or KD. And since you've made it to the end, don't forget to smash that like button for me to get this video out to more people. Subscribe below so you don't miss more videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.